Good morning, everybody, and a warm welcome also from my side. As said, my name is Ante Chopper, and I joined the EX business development team in 2016. I'm responsible for the emissions auctions at EX. This is the agenda of what we have prepared for you today. So first, Adrian Nicolai from the European Commission will give you a brief overview about the EU ETS. In agenda items two till four, I will present to you and we will cover EEX as common auction platform, auction participation, and the auction process. At the end of agenda item four, I will hand over to my colleague Jens Kresse from the market operations team and he will show you a short demo auction. Thereafter, my colleague Christian Fleischer, who is head of sales environmentals at EX, will inform you briefly about the secondary market as well as the voluntary carbon market offering. Finally, on the agenda item six, three intermediaries will present their offering for accessing the EX emissions markets. We will close this webinar with sufficient time for a Q&A session. Now we'll hand over to Adrian, please. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Andre. Um, yes, uh, my name is Adrian Nicolai. I work for the European Commission DG Climate um, in the unit on ETS implementation, uh, and I especially focus on the auctioning process. I'm going to try to give you a brief overview of the auctioning process, and I see um, just a little bit to set the frame for the discussions. And then, if necessary, in the Q&A, we can go a bit more in details in ETS implementation or design questions linked more to the legislative framework. Um, just as a as a reminder, probably most of you are familiar with the ETS system. Um, the ETS is a cap and trade system where we set an overall cap on the emission allowances, where one emission allowance represents one, one ton of CO2. The cap is uh, decreasing uh, gradually by a set rate, and you see in this graph here the linear reduction factor for the current phase of 2.2% per year. Within this, uh, within this uh, cap, companies are free to trade any emission allowances that they need or they have as a surplus for uh, their emissions. Um, next slide, please. Auctioning, um, it's, we consider it as the most transparent method for allocating emission allowances, which allows participants to acquire the allowance at the market price. As a short parenthesis, uh, the alternative method would be free allocation. So here we're talking about allocating allowances without uh, auctioning through a process on involving benchmarks and production, uh, value, production values and so on. At the moment, auctioning accounts for up to 77, 57% of the allowances uh, allocated for, under the EU ETS. This share is gradually increasing, and you may probably know from the discussions in the in, you see in the newspapers on the ETS revision, the there are proposals of phasing out free allocation over the next uh, 10 years or more. Um, the exact auctioning volume is being determined based on the provisions on the ETS directive. And then there is the so-called market stability reserve that operates every year based on a calculation of how many allowances are uh, overall in the market and the thresholds put in the legislation. A certain amount of allowances are withdrawn uh, from the market in order to bring down the total number of allowances to an, a level decided uh, in the legislation. This is partially as a response to structural surplus in the market um, that are, it can be traced back all the way back to the financial crisis in 2008-2009. Next slide, please. Um, auctioning is governed by a relatively complex legal framework. We start with the ETS directive and then a specific implementing regulation that sets the details of how auctioning are, are, should be organized. Then the auctioning platform is uh, contracted under the so-called joint procurement agreement where a number of member states participate jointly in order to auction through one joint uh, auction platform. 
And this uh, this legal framework also has a number of escrow custody agreements, clearing conditions, and so on that uh, that make um, that are part of the the contractual framework. Then financial then uh, the financial legislation covers emission allowance since 2018. Since um, then, they are classified as financial instruments. And here we have the ME feed uh, and then ME directives, and as well as the framework for market uh, uh, abuse for anti-money laundering and, and so on. Next slide, please. Then in terms of the auctioning platform, as I mentioned previously, the joint procurement agreement mandated the European Commission on behalf of 28 countries. We have two, 25 European uh, EU member states and three EEA EFTA countries to auction to contract a common auction platform that will join that will uh, that will auction the allowances on their behalf. Uh, European Energy Exchange (EEX) is the common auction platform. Germany and Poland have opted out from uh, using the common action platform, where Germany has nominated separately EX as its opt-out platform, and Poland is using the common action platform until further notice. Just from a, a practical, uh, let's say, uh, point of view, the main difference from a say user point of view is that uh, there will be different days when auctions will be uh, allowances will be auctioned for Germany or for Poland, uh, different volumes and slight different calendar. But otherwise, the rules and the conditions are very much the same. And with this, I will close my part of the presentation. I will pass back to Andre, and then if any questions on this, happy to take them in the Q and A. Thank you, Adrian. So agenda item number two will cover information about EX and its carbon market offering. As a global commodity exchange, EX Group builds secure, successful and sustainable commodity markets worldwide together with our customers. The group offers trading in power, natural gas, environmental products, freight and agriculturals as well as clearing, registry, and other services. EX Group consists of several companies in several countries worldwide, with a headquarter in Leipzig in Germany. The main shareholder is Deutsche Börse Group with slightly above 75%. Next slide, please. EX Group has become truly global in the last decade. We are the number one in power trading worldwide. Currently, more than 800 participants from 41 countries are trading with us. And we have 19 locations worldwide. These are marked with the, with the blue dots on this slide. You can see that Europe is our home base but we also have offices in the United States, Singapore, and Australia. Next slide, please. If you had not much to do with exchange trading so far, you may ask why it has become so important. There are several reasons, and the main ones are highlighted on this slide. Number one, exchanges are creating transparency through recognized reference prices and the publication of market data. Number two, exchanges are concentrating liquidity of a large number of trading participants. Three, exchanges have a very high degree of automation and standardized processes. Four, and very important, is the elimination of the counterparty risk through clearing and settlement via the clearinghouse of the exchanges. Five, the anonymity of exchange trading and the regulation of the market ensure non-discrimination and equal treatment of trading, of all trading participants. Next slide, please. On this slide, you see in the upper part where in the world we are offering access to carbon markets. And on the bottom side of the slide, you see some of the milestones of EEX, EX Group's carbon markets. For example, we started the EUA spot market in 2005. 
A major milestone was in 2012, where EX and its clearinghouse ECC became the common auction platform for the European Union for the first time. Later on, EX and ECC were awarded with the common auction platform 2, the so-called CAP2 in 2016, and CAP3 in 2021. I will come back to the current auction mandates in a few minutes. What may be of interest for many of the participants today as well is that EX Group listed voluntary carbon market products in June 2022. My colleague Christian will you inform about this later. Next slide, please. This slide shows you the volume of EUA auctioned by EX. And this is represented by the bars and the left axis. The gray line characterizes the number of auctions per year. As of end of 2021, EX had successfully conducted an impressive number of 2,249 auctions within the EU ETS. Next slide, please. We will not go into the details of this slide. It displays the four EU ETS auction mandates that EX holds in 2022. The common auction platform, as already told by Adrian, is for 25 EU member states plus three EAFTA countries, the Innovation Fund and the Modernization Fund. The respective countries are marked in red in this slide and have together some preliminary 406 million allowances and therefore the biggest share. So this 406 million allowances is for 2022 only, of course. The allowances can be bought under each EU ETS auction mandate. It, um, so all are the same. Um, there is no marking. For example, if you would buy your allowances in a German auction on a Friday. Next slide, please. Now we are with agenda item number three, the participation in the auctions. So hopefully this is of interest for you. And why? Because auctioning is the default method of allocating allowances within the EU ETS. Free allocation has been reduced significantly and auctioning is an open, transparent, harmonized and non-discriminatory process. What are further advantages to participate in the emission auctions at EX? For example, there are almost daily auctions. We offer a variety of direct and indirect access options. We have a very strong customer focus. Auctions have a fair and transparent price formation. Also, the fees are potentially lower than on the OTC and the secondary market. And small discounts to the secondary market prices are possible. Next slide, please. Although many companies are interested in joining the auctions, unfortunately, not all allow, are allowed to do so. Eligible participants in accordance with the EU auctioning regulation are compliance buyers, meaning operators of stationary installations and aircraft operators. Number two, investment firms and credit institutions. Three, business groupings of compliance buyers. And four, other intermediaries specifically authorized by the home member state. All of these participants have to fulfill admission requirements according to EU and EX rules. Inter alliar, an establishment in the EU, except for compliance buyers, a nominated holding account in the union registry, and 
a nominated bank account. Next slide, please. There are currently six options to participate in the auctions. There are five options would grant direct access to the auctions via several EX memberships. Here in this slide, marked with the green frame and with letters A to E. And there's one option with indirect access via intermediaries. In this slide with the blue frame and marked with F. We have currently six intermediaries who offer access to the auctions. Some of them will present themselves under agenda item six in some minutes. Additionally, to these six options on the slide, AX and ECC together with the European Commission are looking into the possibility of offering also the option of direct clearing particip participation as clearing member with ECC. But this is pending to further legal assessment. If successful, this option could become available to participants within 2010, 2023. Next slide, please. This slide compares the six current access options presented on the previous slide. Whereas the terms and conditions for indirect access need to be agreed upon with the intermediary, the fixed cost for the direct access vary depending on the membership models. Generally, new trading participants will not be charged annual fees for the first 12 months. Thereafter, yearly costs vary between zero for the auction only membership, 2.5 kilo euro for the emerging and environmental markets, 19 kilo euro for all markets except gas, and 30 kilo euro for all EX markets. Additionally, fees of maximum 1 kilo euro per year for ECC may apply from the second year on if a participant creates no or very few allowances in one year. Now let's focus on the criteria to fulfill. What you can see is that each of the six auction in each of the six auction participation options, the company needs to be eligible in accordance with Article 18 of the auctioning regulation and as explained two slides ago. Furthermore, for all direct membership options, a contract with a clearing member is necessary. Additionally, for all di direct membership options, except auction only via EX help desk, a trader examination and technical access are required. Last not least, for all direct membership options, except auction only, a liable equity of at least 50 kilo euro is required. Next slide, please. If you choose one of the five direct op access options, then this slide gives you an overview about the steps to take and the forms to fill. Firstly, you would contact EX and choose one membership option. Depending on this, you would secondly provide the respective forms and thirdly, receive confirmation from EX and ECC that you are ready to bid or trade. Next slide, please. We are now with agenda item four, which is the auction process. This slide gives you an overview about the auction process and it will be complemented by a live demo in the auction system in a few minutes. The auction format is single round, so bids will be submitted during one given bidding video. It's sealed bids. Bids will be submitted without seeing other participants' bids. And it's uniform price. 
all successful bidders will pay the same auction clearing price. The bidding window is usually open from 9 to 11 a.m. CET. The auction products are either general allowances, EUA, or seven times per year aviation allowances, EUAA. Bids can be submitted, modified, and deleted during the bidding window. Sharp at 11 a.m. CET, the auction is closed and the auction clearing price is determined. I will present you an easy example for this on the next slide. If the auction is successful, no, no, please go back. Thank you. It was just, uh, yeah a hint that I will present an example on the next slide. But we are not ready with this one. So if the auction is successful, the results will be shown immediately in the auction system and will be transferred in real time to the news feeds. It will also be displayed on the website. At around 11.05 CET, but no later than 11.15 CET, the detailed auction results, such as minimum and maximum price, bid price, of course, minimum and maximum bid price, and the number of bids and bidders and much more details are published on the dedicated auction website. On the next working day after the auction, the payment is collected from the clearing members of the successful bidders and the revenues are transferred further on to the auctioneers. Furthermore, the delivery of the allowances within the ECC union registry accounts take place. Upon request, a transfer of the allowances from the ECC union registry account to the union registry account of the trading member is initiated. Now, next slide, please. Here we find an easy example for the determination of the clearing price. On the left hand side, you see we have six bits, one from each of the bidders A to F. In the middle then, after the close of the bidding window, the bids are sorted in descending order of the bid price. In this example from 95 down to 82 euro. Tied bids such as the two at 85 euro, are sorted through random selection according to an algorithm. Then, on the right-hand side, bid volumes are added, starting with the highest price bid. The price at which the summed up bid volumes match or exceed the volume of allowances auctioned sets the auction clearing price for all successful bidders. In our example, the volume is allocated at an auction clearing price of 85 euro per allowance. Bidder D sets the price for all bidders, being the last successful buyer. As there has been more than one bidder at the clearing price, there has been a random distribution of the rest volume to one bidder. In our example, 390,000 allowances to bidder D. Next slide, please. In which cases can the auction be cancelled? The auctioning regulation provides three scenarios for the cancellation. A, the total bid volume falls short of the volume of auctioned allowances. An example from the previous slide, this would have been the case if the total bid volume would have been below 1 million allowances then there is no um, vol uh, volume auctioned at all. The auction has to be cancelled. Scenario number B, if the auction clearing price is significantly under the secondary market price. This so-called reserve price is determined by EX in accordance with a confidential procedure. And Scenario C, technical problems occur. Within the last five years, 
we had almost 1,100 auctions and only six had to be cancelled. If an auction is cancelled, the auction volume will be evenly distributed to the next four scheduled auctions in case of an EOA auction or to the next two in, course, in, in case of an uh, aviation auction. Next slide, please. This slide displays a screenshot of the auction system. And here with, I would like to hand over to my colleague Jens, Jens Kresse from the market operations team, who will show you a demo auction. Yeah, thank you, Andre. Uh, hello and uh, guten Tag from my side as well. Uh, I want to give you a quick overview about our uh, auction system. For that, I will share my screen. So um, you shall now see the auction screen and I logged in already. And the first screen which uh, uh, pops up to you is the auction overview. Uh, the auction overview uh, shows you uh, various auctions in various phases. So we have, uh, for example, historical auctions um, like the, uh, we call them finished ones. We have upcoming auctions, we call them published ones, and we have uh, uh, running auctions. And since the main purpose today is to show you how to enter bids, I will uh, enter the running auction. I click on the auction uh, that unfolds a little area. And in order to access my bid list, I need to uh, press the button and my bid overview comes to the foreground, um, which is empty, of course, because I have not uh, placed bids yet. Uh, in order to do so, I need to press the placed bids button. And you see an um, area where I have the possibility to enter the quantity and the price. So it's pretty simple. And I made use of the possibility to set a default quantity of 10,000 and a default price of 89. And I just need to press the button in order to place the bid on the auction system. I can, of course, um, enter or change, uh, uh, enter further bids via using my key, uh, my, uh, my keypad and I just want to add some further bits. And I can also use those minus and plus buttons in order to decrease or increase the volume or the price. So now I just want to add a further bit at 79.50 and place it. And I, bit, I place some further bits. So uh, once I'm done, you see all my all the bits you placed in your bid overview. Uh, this line gives you a summarize of your auction of your bids. So you can see that I placed seven bids. I placed in total 860,000 certificate or I bid in total for 860,000 certificates. Uh, my highest bid is 89 euros. My lowest is 74 and a half. And um, this is pretty useful when you, of course, place some more bits like I did, then you uh, have a better overview on that line. Uh, once you place the bits, you can, of course, change and modify the bits. So you can again go into it and change, change the values via your keypad. You can use those plus minus buttons. And every time when I change something, the background color changes to gray, so that informs me that I still need to approve those uh, those uh, adjustments, and I can do that via that button. Yes, I want to change, and then the bits are valid in the system. I can of course select all auction uh, all bits, and can uh, use those buttons on the top in order to change the parameters of all uh, bits at once. So I can press here and you see the price changes in a 25 cent uh, step. That's because I uh, configured it like that. So you can also configure other price steps, one euro, whatever you want to. And you can, of course, change uh, the quantity. Right now I changed it with a 10,000 uh, uh, volume uh, step. Since I don't want to make the, uh, such modifications, uh, 
I just can reset those modifications via that button and I get the formal details again. Uh, let me show you again how to change several bits at once. So I take the four bits on the bottom and I change the price again on the on the top and I lift the price pretty high. So click, 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 pretty easy. And I still need to modify. I press and then you see that those bits went up within my bit list. So the bit list is by default ordered in a descending uh, way. So on the price, you can of course uh, sort via quantity, but uh, it's most useful to leave it like uh, it's set via default by uh, order, uh, sorting it via price. And since those four bits uh, I used for demonstration reasons, I want to remove them now. So I click on the cancel selected bits button. And here again, I have my three initial uh, bits and that's actually all. I now need to give my colleague in the background a short information in order to close the auction. Uh, since this is a test auction, uh, we can do that manually and in production environment, of course, the auction closes automatically. So it will then it will close when the time has expired. But today, since this is a test environment, we don't want to wait another 56 minutes. So give us a short moment that my colleagues can close the auction manually. You will see then a face change. So this uh, frame will change the color to gray. And that takes some seconds. And once it's closed, we need to now it happened. It's closed. We can't can't do anything right now, so I can't change anything. I can't uh, delete uh, orders. Right now we wait another moment for the final execution. So the exception, I actually expect an exception of the auction. And so another phase change we are waiting for. Once this, this is done, we immediately see the final auction result. Now that happens, so we see again the phase changed uh, to finished. You see it via the orange frame. You see immediately the final result of that auction at 83 and 75 cents. You now see that we allocated in total 46,000 certificates. So we can see that our first bid, which originally was entered at 89 euros, was executed fully. That uh, shows the green color. And our second bid uh, will be executed or was executed partially. So we just get 36,000 out of the original 100,000 bid. And our last uh, bid was uh, too low in terms of the price. And uh, yeah, that's actually all. And um, the presentation has a link to our video tutorial, which is a little bit longer. So there's uh, some more detailed information. And uh, I want to forward now to my colleague, the head of sales environmentals to uh, Christian Fleischer. Yeah, hello everybody from my side. As uh, Jens said, I'm responsible for the sales part, uh, environmental part of the sales team here at AEX in Leipzig. Um, and I would like to present to you the secondary market and also give you some insights on our exciting market of voluntary carbon market. But before that, I would like to uh, give you a general overview of uh, carbon related segments within our offering at AEX. Um, as Andre said, we are active in that field uh, already 17 years <clears throat> and uh, offer next to our uh, emissions auctions for the EU ETS also the secondary market, which is uh, spot fusion and options. And uh, the voluntary carbon market is an exciting field where we uh, are going to extend to uh, now and also later. I will come up to that. Uh, later on in my presentation. And we are also excited that we can offer a carbon market in North America with our nodal exchange. That is a, a group exchange based in Washington and 
the nodal exchange offers the largest set of environmental futures and options contracts in the world. So we are happy to have them in our group as well. And uh, we are also proud of uh, being the sell-off platform for the German National Emissions Trading Scheme, the NEHS, um, where we are active uh, since last year. And we have also a cooperation in New Zealand with the New Zealand Exchange. And we do uh, consultancy and technical support there for the New Zealand ETS auctions. Of course, uh, all of our markets are cleared, and this is done by our clearing house that we have uh, spinned off um, some years ago. Uh, that is uh, the European Commodity Clearing uh, AG. That is our clearing house that facilitates the um, uh, financial and physical settlements of our trades and guarantees the counterparty risk uh, settlement. So, coming to the next slide, I would like to deep uh, dive deeper into the secondary market where we complement the trading instruments uh, in the EU ETS with uh, products on the spot side that are complementary on the short term uh, of the curve. And this is, of course, uh, a bit differently than the auction. It is traded continuously between 8 and 18 uh, CET. And of course, um, the futures market is also provided to our market players and market uh, members and uh, also options for the EUA instruments. Um, this, of course, makes a comprehensive product suite where we serve all different types of market um, and provide also um, uh, trading uh, uh, screens that are state of the art with uh, the already shown M7A auction screen. But uh, this comes along also with a trading screen from TT that serves the secondary market as well. Of course, there are other uh, ISVs possible like Trayport or Fastville and uh, uh, plenty of other ISVs are possible. We have uh, um, some features on the secondary market as well to provide. Um, that is, for example, the same day registry transfer that is uh, possible for board certificates that are already hold at custody at ECC. And um, next to that is uh, our delivery process at all um, or altogether. This is, uh, in our view, one of the most streamlined and efficient delivery process in um, the field of carbon that works all with internal accounts at ECC and is really efficient and um, trading can be uh, or can take place also in the case the uh, EU registry is in maintenance or closed for some reason. And uh, next to that, we offer also other margining related uh, features that we are uh, uh, really proud of is, uh, for example, if you connect your trading with other asset classes like gas or power, then you, of course, can benefit of cross margining. We are using here the CME spend methodology, and this reduces um, the margin uh, requirements um, based on uh, efficiency uh, factors. And uh, next to that is uh, the possibility um, of using EUA certificates as a collateral. So that can also reduce your entire margin requirements substantially. Um, of course, uh, we offer competitive transaction fees and schemes and uh, multiple connectivity solutions are possible, as said already. Coming to the next slide. And now we are. Uh, yeah, getting into the voluntary carbon market side. Um, we are very happy that this uh, has launched successfully on Nodal already on 17th of June. That is uh, uh, our Washington-based group exchange that is covering power and environmental business. And uh, the question is, what what is voluntary carbon market? Uh, maybe I answer that with the uh, complementary side of the carbon market, contrary to the compliance market, companies can uh, voluntarily take part in the climate action and cl carbon market by buying those certificates in the market and doing climate action. And this is, of course, in contrary to the compliance market, where co companies or these different industry sectors are obliged to take part by 
uh, bending uh, emission reduction targets um, raised by, by uh, single countries or by groupings of countries like the EU. Um, the voluntary carbon market is uh, mostly project-based, so there are private, privately owned uh, project developers that are being audited, and by these auditors, um, uh, the offset credits are issued based on the efficiency of those projects, and these uh, uh, certificates or offset credits can then be traded. There are a lot of different types of carbon credits out there, and so is the voluntary car carbon market very heterogeneous. But there are two main categories of uh, credits out there. That is um, the reduction credits that aim on the reduction and avoidance of uh, emission into the atmosphere. And the other side are these removal credits that aim on remove or se sequestrate um, CO2 equivalents uh, from the atmosphere. So you can say that this market is a semi-standardized market because all these credits have one um, uh, unified uh, denomination, which is one ton of CO2 equivalent um, that represented one credit. Uh, yeah. So what we are seeing here is as well that the boundaries between those two poles of the carbon market, compliance on the one side and a voluntary market on the other side, that these boundaries are increasingly blurring. So there are um, ETS, emissions trading schemes out there that do allow to take care of or consider offsets as well, such as the California ETS, or connected to a carbon tax, and this is seen in South Africa, or that are based entirely on offsets only, such we see in uh, the COSIA scheme. Next slide, please. Having a view on our uh, product scope, we have launched on Nodal already these four products. We see four products in each line is one product uh, next to some other uh, products. But these four main contracts for the VCM will also be launched on EX later this year or beginning next year um, and aim on certain standards that are already established in the market. Um, that is, for example, the Corsia eligible contract that combines technology-based and nature-based methodologies in the segment of reduction credits. So as you see in the upper part, the entire voluntary carbon market can be divided into two main areas, which I said before in the reduction avoidance part of the VCM and on the other side, the removal credits part. And uh, there is the differentiation between technology-based and nature-based methodologies. And the COSIA contract will combine the technology-based and the nature-based uh, methodologies into one single basket product. There's a second product that is called nature-based product, um, and this combines uh, both fields, reduction credits and removal credits, uh, but all in all um, using only nature-based methodologies. And the third uh, contract will be the carbon removal contract, which is, which is of course one of the uh, key uh, products uh, and contracts for uh, the future. And this combines nature-based and technology-based methodologies only on the side of uh, uh, carbon removals. The GER is uh, kind of a cross-sectional contract, a project bundle. This is uh, a co composition of different fields of the VCM, giving one main or one single price for the entire VCM and will provide all buyers the way towards uh, net zero 2050 and being aligned with the Paris Agreement. All in all, uh, we think that we have with this well-balanced and high quality product suite. And of course, uh, our one-stop shop if it comes to voluntary and compliance market because we can combine both uh, poles and both different segments of the carbon market. We will offer spot and derivatives instruments for the VCM and provide with our uh, worldwide client network a global access to our uh, global of, uh, audience. Um, and what also is really helpful and uh, we are strong in is the close align alignment with public and private stakeholders. That's it from my side and I would like to hand over to Andre again. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Christian. Um, with this slide, we come to the intermediaries. And what I wanted to say is that we have three presenting uh, intermediaries today. Unfortunately, one of them, AFS, has technical problems and uh, cannot join today's webinar. Nevertheless, uh, we have two, ACT and PGE, that will present their offering today. We have three more intermediaries that will not be uh, active in, in today's webinar, which are ABM, Vienna Investment Trust, and Sagora. All of them can be found, um, including uh, details how to contact them on our dedicated auction website. So we start in the alphabetical order, and with that, I'm pleased to hand over to Dario Papst from ACT. Yes, hello, uh, and thank you very much, Andre, for the brief introduction. I'm uh, happy to be able to represent ACT here today, uh, ACT Group. Uh, we're a global uh, trading house for environmental products, energy, fuels, biofuels, and also exchange-traded products. Um, that will be a short presentation today. For any further questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to us directly. As an intermediary, we're happy to help out. Uh, can we go to the second slide? Right, so specifically, I'm uh, representing ACT Financial Solutions today uh, within ACT Group. We're the dedicated firm for uh, exchange uh, exchange traded uh, products according to MIFID 2. Um, we're basically the financial service provider within the company. Um, here you can see that uh, we have uh, a license in 31 countries uh, to trade financial products. We have uh, the license for investment services and activities when it comes to uh, the execution of orders, uh, which is the intermediary service. Also the dealing on, of, uh, on our own accounts, which will be the secondary market services. And we can also do some investment advice. Additionally to that, which I will also highlight later on, uh, we have the ancillary services, which is the safekeeping and administration of client funds and assets which will be helpful later on. Um, yeah, uh, so this regulation basically uh, uh, requires us to fulfill some very strict requirements when it comes to financial strength and client protection, which is uh, why it is interesting for all our counterparties. Um, can we go to the third slide already? Yeah, that, that looks a bit better. So a brief couple of words also to our market expertise and basically our key points of differentiation uh, in the market. So we have a uh, full membership with most of the major exchanges for commodities, uh, not the, just the ones that are listed there, but most products uh, can be traded via us. So we provide market access and efficient pricing for yeah, energy related products and environmental products. Um, we try also uh, to have, despite our global presence, uh, to have a very regional approach. Uh, so our sales traders team um, will be able to help you in, in, in any European language. Uh, we are very well connected globally. We're on the board of IETA, for example, but we also keep track of regional developments in order to, to, to help out our counterparties on the ground. Um, I myself, for example, I'm the, the head of the German markets uh, at ACT Financial Solutions, but uh, our uh, global team of uh, roughly 300, uh, 300 traders and employees is very, very much able to help you in uh, in your regional language and for your regional product uh, problems. So um, with this very client-centric approach, uh, we also have the command of the local markets, but at the very bottom, we also have some uh, technology advancements in-house. So we have uh, Circular in-house, that's a service uh, company, in order to establish a trading platform that allows our counterparties even simpler access to all these products. Why I'm speaking to you today, however, is uh, of course the carbon market. So if we go one more slide further, 
let's come to the carbon trading with uh, with ACT. We've been active in the European emissions trading system for 12 to 13 years now. Um, we have been providing market access to all major carbon products uh, across the globe. Specifically in Europe, we obviously do the EUAs, the, the UK allowances, the German national allowances and the Swiss allowances, which are all um, which are all European uh, carbon allowances. This is usually done via the secondary market. Uh, so you would simply onboard with uh, ACT and face us as a counterparty and we provide market access. Now, together with EX and uh, the help of uh, the dedicated team, we can also provide uh, intermediary access to the primary market. Um, that can be done on an indirect and a direct basis. I will briefly highlight now the benefits or the, the, the conditions of this primary market access as compared to the secondary market access, how it is done usually. So um, with this primary market access, we can provide you with full price transparency to the auction price, of course. So um, all the points that uh, Andre highlighted uh, earlier are also applicable if you go through an intermediary to the market. Um, we have, however, a quite simple and client focused onboarding process, which uh, makes trading with us uh, easy and fast. So we can take on a new client within 24 hours. Our order flow is also quite simple. Besides the platform that I mentioned earlier, uh, you basically reach out to us directly uh, and we take orders, stagger, stagger some bids in for you, or uh, we, we, we simply uh, we do it once a week, once a month, once a year, how often uh, you need it. And um, our fee structure is done on an individual basis. So uh, because of all the flexibility that we try to build in, and it's not hard, uh, it's not easy to say, OK, um, based on this volume, it will be this and this much. No, because of the flexibility, um, that we provide in terms of uh, payment terms, contracts, even the structure and the payment structure and the cash flows. There is uh, an individual part for 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 every participant. Um, yeah, and last last but not least, at the very bottom, our partner network uh, can also support with a lot of services surrounding the EU ETS. So not just the purchasing or trading of emissions allowances, but also the a little bit of consultancy, the measurements, the optimization of subsidies from the German government or other governments, um, some registry management or even some balance sheet management. Yes, uh, so now let's go one slide further. Um, that is the most important slide. So I will uh, briefly talk about our two access models. Here at ACT, uh, we have built the intermediary access model and, and refined it a little bit to make it more efficient and more attractive for everybody. Um, specifically, if you look on the left side of, the, of your screen, you can see that um, if we act as an intermediary, you basically get direct access to the EEX um, via our existing network and our um, financial infrastructure. This means there is no need for uh, onboarding with a separate clearing entity, no need for credit lines, no need to uh, get involved with your bank very much. You can simply use our network in the sense that we have uh, a safe payment custody foundation at the bottom of the left picture, uh, which means that your, your payments are safeguarded, the allowances are transferred directly uh, into your account, they don't go through ACT. You basically only use our infrastructure, gain full price transparency and have a very, very safe, um, very, very reliable trading structure. The second one is a little bit simplified, which has benefits and drawbacks. Uh, the main point is that you face ACT as a counterparty and not uh, not only we, we're not only relaying your orders, uh, but we're actually facing them ourselves. We have 
simpler contracts, uh, there's a very flexible structure in the ordering. Uh, that can be quite interesting. So, so here we can also start talking about, you know, delayed payment terms in case you uh, have, uh, you know, a large back office operations. It can be quite complicated in large corporates. We know that and we try to accommodate that. And last but not least, uh, it is available for everybody. So while the direct access, the intermediary access is limited, as Andre pointed out, um, to operators and financial institutions. The counterparty access, which provides you with the same benefits, the full price transparency, etc., it is available for everybody. Um, so far, at least, so far it is available for everybody. Um, yeah, so these are the two models at ACT. We're very happy to accommodate you or uh, your needs, and uh, we are looking forward to hear from uh, as many new counterparties as possible. Uh, we have uh, some capacity to spend, and we're happy to, to hear from you. Can we quickly go to the last slide, and then I can hand over? Yeah, so this is Circular, a brief highlight of Circular. We're currently building a platform for market access. Um, the, the, the circular is basically a post trade management solution where you can uh, enter your bids, you can uh, follow your deliveries and you can follow the contracting process and the invoicing process. So you have one interface which should make everything quite simple. We're currently working it out uh, and obviously we would like, love to hear how much demand or how much interest there would be for such a solution. And I think that's it. Uh, please, last slide. Those are my details. Uh, as I said, I'm from ACT. We hope to hear from you. Thank you very much for your attention. Oh, hello. Uh, good morning to everyone. I'm Marcin Wachowiak uh, from PGE Tom Maklerski, PGE Broker House. I'm a trader here, especially in, in Carbon Desk. And uh, it's really, uh, I'm very pleased to be here with you and talk to you a little bit more about uh, our business, our model business, about who we are and what we are doing. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the most of the informations are presented here on the slide about us. Uh, just a few more additional words uh, from my side. PG Dom Makreski is owned totally in 100% by PGE. Uh, we are a member of EEX Exchange for many years till today not only as PG brokerage house, but uh, as a PG group as well. Uh, perhaps we are not the best known brokerage house in the business, but we are extremely experienced, gaining the experience through the years on Polish and European commodities markets. And uh, the last thing which I would like to uh, to tell, to, to underline, which is extremely, exp extremely important nowadays, in my opinion, it's, uh, it's for all of you to, to know and uh, to have the knowledge that your partner you are doing business with is a really solid and reliable partner uh, in credit, risk, and legal standpoint. Uh, next slide, please. Here are the, here are the details, the, the contact details to us. Please uh, contact us uh, in case of any questions. If you like to uh, know something more about the table of fees or or onboarding process or all the documentation. Please contact us by email or phone. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for attention. And now I'm hand over to Andrea again. Yes. 
Thank you very much uh, for all of the interesting presentations. We are now with the Q&A session, and I see that we have received quite some questions. We will go them through from the top to the bottom and hopefully answer them all. So first one is only organizational-wise, nothing to answer. Then costs to participate in the auctions for a MSE. Um, I suggest it means SME, and we have covered the costs um, in the presentation. Uh, Stephanie, if you can go to three access to the auctions. Yes. One more. Yes. This is the slide where all the costs are displayed. Um, uh, the whole webinar will be available afterwards um, on the EEX YouTube channel, and also the presentation will be available, I think, on our website. Um, uh, you can have a read through this uh, slide, please. Um, everything is mentioned there, and I explained it also during the webinar. Next question, copy of the presentation. Yes, it will be published. Oh, it was already answered. The recording was also already answered. Thank you, Juliana. Um, maybe, Juliana, maybe you can provide um, a link in the chat where on the EX website it will be published tomorrow. And maybe also the link to our YouTube channel. Next question, why there is a difference in the price of allowances between EUX and German and Polish stock exchanges? Um, so, Georges, your question probably doesn't refer to the price for the allowances, um, but it refers to the fee, so to the variable costs for purchasing um, the allowances in the auctions. And they differ because of different, different contracts that we have uh, with each um, of our contract partners. So the German contract was uh, concluded a bit earlier. Um, they're at the moment uh, a bit cheaper than the other auctions, but it's, it's a 3.5 um, kilo euro, uh, 3.5 euro per 1,000 allowances compared to 4.46 euro per 1000 allowances. If you uh, have in mind that one allowance, so not 1000, but one allowance is currently at a price of around 83 euro, um, then it's, it's not a, really a difference there. Next question. Why is volume decreasing, but the number of auctions increasing? Auctions are shrinking in size. What is the reason for this? Um, this will be answered by Adrian from the European Commission. And maybe you can go back to the slide with the um, where this is shown. OK, so um, well, the number of auctions, if you see, they're actually fairly stable. We'd have to go back to the individual years to see why the variation. There can be a variation number of auctions based on how the holidays or uh, also between phase uh, 2020 and 21 has been the, the, the change from phase three to phase four, where um, implementing legislation may have been a little bit delayed or the, the signature of the contract, which could explain it. But generally speaking, the number of auctions is relatively stable from one year to another. Um, the volume of auctions is decreasing. Uh, it can be for a number of reasons. The, sh the first one is um, the decreasing of the cap that uh, the ETS directive sets a linear reduction factor and the overall cap is decreased by a certain percentage every year, which then be reflected in the volume of the auctions. The other factor that will determine the volume of the auctions is the, the how big the feed or the number of allowances placed in the market stability reserve is. Uh, and that varies from year to year. And in some years, it can be substantially larger or substantially uh, smaller, depending on basically exogenous factors. 
Um, for last year, it was relatively high due to the low emissions in 2020 as a result of the COVID uh, lockdowns and so on, which resulted in economic slowdown. And then this was reflected in a high number of allowances in circulation in 2021 and a higher feed into the market stability reserve. Um, so in principle, these will be the main factors. There will be other adjustments based on the some factors in the recession, but these two would be the main um, main factors. There are in the registration minimum thresholds for how much it should be at the minimum auction in, in, a, at, in a one auction. And for example, the Polish auctions used to be uh, held every week. And because of the decrease in the number of auctions, uh, in the, the number of allowances auctions, they have been reduced. The frequency has been reduced to bi-weekly auctions. So in principle, uh, that would be reduced to match the decrease in auctions. Yeah, sorry, the decreasing volumes. And I Thank can you, maybe... Adrian. Yeah. Uh, we can stay with you because yeah. the next question uh, is also for you. When will shipping companies be eligible to participate? Taking into account maritime sector will be obliged with ETS soon. Um, the answer to this question is largely outside of my hands. It depends on the, the legislative process and when the, there is an agreement or at least a stable form of the revision of the ETS directive between Council and Parliament accepting the, the proposal of the Commission to introduce maritime, then that will require amendment to the implementing acts, the auctioning regulation where um, maritime operators would be added as an eligible, um, eligible participant. And which means that also then I think the registry regulation to allow the opening of re operator accounts for maritime. In principle, that should happen relatively soon. As soon as we have a stable text in the in the council and parliament, we will start working on this. From what I know in the co-decision, the, there is a proposal already being discussed and we'll hear in the next couple of days uh, to postpone the start of the maritime from 23 to 24, but this is still subject to discussion. So we're, we are also waiting to see the outcome. Thank you very much. Um, I will take the next question. And uh, please, uh, Stephanie, go to the slide in uh, agenda item number four where it says cancellation of the auctions. Yes, thank you. The question is, what is a successful auction? And basically every auction that has not to be canceled is successful. So um, first, the total volume of bids must be at least as high as the auction allowances that are available. And second, um, the auction clearing price is not significantly under the secondary market price. So it's round about the secondary market price or above the secondary market price. And third, obviously no technical problems occurred. When that is the case, and this is almost always the case, um, the auction is successful. So for all of the more than 2,500 auctions we had so far, uh, only one had to be cancelled to technical reasons and a handful due to the price and uh, also less than a handful due to um, the volume not having been reached. Then next question, could company that use EU ETS participate in auction? I would understand that question that if you are an operator, Am I allowed to participate in the auction? Yes, uh, you are. If the question was uh, meant otherwise, uh, please write it again in the chat. Next question. Some details about the registration process, please. The speaker mentioned some requirements, but we should, should, assess, should assess the effort needs. Stephanie, could you please go to the slides um, under three? Um, yes, or maybe even a bit up. Yes, this one. So here you see with the with the arrows um, what is required for uh, each 
of the different options to access the auctions. And on the next slide, you see um, in detail which forms need to be filled for which kind of direct option. Um, if you choose the indirect option uh, via intermediary, uh, then it's to be agreed with the intermediary what is needed. Um, the effort, it really depends um, on what you have available. Um, you would have to ask uh, our member readiness department. The contact details are, I think, two slides prior to this. Um, once you have decided um, which membership would be the best for you to go, so ask either member readiness or our sales department. Contact details are also there. Um, how big the effort in your specific case would be. Then the question, what is the minimum quantity per bid for the auctions? This is uh, 500 allowances. How often does the auction take place? Seven auctions of EUA and four auctions of EUAA in a year? Question. No, um, it's actually around about seven auctions for EUAA, so for aviation allowances per year and more than 200 auctions for EUA per year. This means almost every weekday there is an auction for general allowances for EUA. Why is the access to the auction not limited to compliance buyers only? This is a question that Adrian will take. Well, the, the short answer to that is because that these are the, the eligibility criteria criteria which open the participation in auctions um, are set in the auction regulation. So that's the legal framework established by the, the legislators. Um, the bit longer acts are more complex. Um, it is doing financial intermediaries, investment banks, uh, credit institutions and so on. I think we, they have an important role in the carbon market, both in auctions and then more importantly than establishing and providing the liquidity in the secondary market. Uh, but that's probably a longer discussions and they are there are discussions at the moment in the ETS revision around this topic will not go too much into detail, uh, but we have the legal framework that it is currently in place, which we are implementing. Thank you. The next two questions go to Christian. And the first one is, what is an offset? Yes, thank you, Andre. Um, that is that is quite simply uh, illustrated or explained. Um, an offset is actually a certificate like you know in the uh, in the primary and secondary market of the EU ETS. It, it is a certificate that stands for climate action in this case. So an offset represents climate action um, that has been done in such a, a, a voluntary carbon market project. Um, so that can be then uh, uh, traded because it is uh, registered in a, in a registry or uh, let's say located in a reg registry and can be traded on a secondary market uh, like, you, like you know in the ETS. So an offset represents as a certificate the climate action that has been done in projects by project developers and represent one ton of uh, uh, CO2 reduction or uh, one ton of CO2 removal. What, what, what has been the second question? Yes, just a that second. Mm -hmm. So many questions now. Uh, let me just check. The second question. How do you take into account that as of the Glasgow meeting of the parties to the Paris Agreement, voluntary units may not be used for binding purposes like COSIA? Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Andre. That is a, a, a quite a complicated question, but I try to um, uh, answer that by uh, the fact that uh, the the legal nature uh, is not clear yet, so there are still open legal questions around the nature of the credits and that Article, article 6 is not uh, fully defined uh, yet. So um, we need to wait for the, the full 
uh, definition of these uh, uh, side and these legal uh, conditions. But anyway, uh, we as an exchange and uh, defining the product specs of uh, our COSIA contract, of course, following the COSIA conditions and COSIA uh, regulations or COSIA uh, uh, rules that has uh, or are set by, by uh, the, the institution itself. So we are following this uh, accordingly. So whenever you trade our COSIA contracts, you will get certificates or offsets that uh, fit to your COSIA compliance needs. Thank you very much. Next question. We are a private company operating a regasification terminal. Are we eligible to participate on the auction platform? If you are an operator under the EU ETS, then yes, you are eligible. Is the, the access to the auction limited to compliance buyers? That's already been answered. Could you please provide an example of removal project for, for voluntary market? That's for Christian again, please. Yes, uh, many thanks. Um, of course, I can give you some, some examples. Uh, I've provided that uh, in written form, but I can, of course, uh, uh, go into details here um, verbally as well. So there are two main areas of uh, removal credits that, as said before, are uh, the ones that are nature-based and the others are technology-based. So for nature-based projects, we see uh, projects on the reforestation area or afforestation. There's other projects that are on soil sequestration or biochar, and we see also wetland restoration. restoration. And technology-based is, of course, uh, not that uh, widely extended so far. That is, uh, for example, direct air capture or mineralization or carbon capture and storage. Thank you. Next question. What are the membership costs? Uh, this goes then back, um, Stephanie, to the slide we had before about the costs under four, under three. Yes, this one. So, yes, as said, we will publish this um, on our website and you can have a read through. It has been explained also in the webinar. Can stationary installations under EU ETS participate to auctions to buy allowances they need for annual compliance? Yes, uh, they are definitely eligible and could participate directly in the auctions either directly or indirectly via intermediary. As an intermediary, how to earn money? Um, Dario, is this uh, something you would like to take? You're Still muted. muted. Now, right. now, now it's better. Sorry. Uh, we earn uh, money as an intermediary uh, based on a uh, fee. So the fee structure will be uh, transparently discussed with each uh, individual counterparty. It is basically a fee for using our uh, financial infrastructure and our, uh, yeah, our, our uh, balance sheet and our bidding process and our marketplace basically to gain market access through us. That is as simple as it is. Thank you, Dario. Marcin, would you also like to answer this question? Marcin, would, would you like to add something? You are still muted, I think. Oh, thank you. Okay. Then uh, next question, uh, phase one and two. Was possible under certain rules to exchange CER into EUA? Phase three, no longer possible. If a corporate has in its account CER, could use the VCM, so the voluntary carbon market to purchase it. 
A question for Christian, please. Yes, uh, I take this one as well. Um, yeah, um, CER has been dropped from the EU ETS uh, compliance in the past and uh, are now um, again provided as a contract at Nodal. So we have uh, not only uh, launched the four main contracts that we will launch at EX as well later this year or beginning next year, but also we have uh, launched a contract on CER. Uh, as far as I know, also different uh, uh, shapes of the CER. So you can, of course, approach Nodal and uh, trade CER contracts on an exchange there. Thank you. What is the relation between European Commission and EU ETS? This is for Adrian, please. It's almost a philosophical question. Um, I guess the European Commission is tasked with the monitoring of the implementation of the EU legislation setting the, um, the, the EU ETS. Um, and then we are working together with national administration competent authorities in the respective member states on various aspects of the implementation of the ETS. But broadly, broadly speaking, we are overviewing the implementation of, of the system. And for any revisions the Commission is proposing, uh, the changes that would be then discussed by the legislator. Thank you. Next question. Are there marketplaces through which people can buy and resell EUA without going through EX? Um, and as already meant, uh, answered by uh, Dario, uh, you could use an intermediary. Um, uh, you could uh, just use the over-the-counter market and agree bilaterally with someone. Um, and uh, of course, there are also competitors of EX, but this would also be exchanges then. Next question. Excuse me that I come back for April month. The price of EOAs are EOAs under EU cap 3, 80.29, under EOX cap, okay. Uh, under EX uh, cap 3, DE, PL, NER, 80.53 euro per ton. Um, so, Georges, you have probably um, seen those prices on our website and uh, they are different because they um, uh, refer to different days. So um, the um, auctions for the European Commission are always on Monday, Tuesday and Thursday each week. Um, Polish auctions every other week on Wednesday Northern Ireland auction only once per year, this year two times, and German auction every Friday. And uh, those 80-29 must have been uh, somewhere Monday, Tuesday or Thursday. And then the price changed and uh, for the other auction, then uh, it the price went up a bit to 80-53. Um, but uh, generally there is a one price for emission allowances and uh, the deviation that you found is only due to different days. Could you please provide an example of marketplace where I can buy carbon? Um, I think we have provided some examples. Um, you could buy uh, carbon allowances of different sorts uh, within EX. Um, it's the slides from Christian Fleischer under five. Uh, you could also go via an intermediary. Yes. And also use the OTC market. Next question, which is the simpler option for a company that needs to do a yearly sell by transaction according to the regulation, but of course operates a completely different line of business and doesn't have in-house experience? Simpler option, you, you mean the simplest op option um, to participate in your auction. Then you could um, probably use an intermediary or you could use the auction only access. 
what kind of technical issues led to an auction being cancelled? Um, hopefully none. Um, other than that, it could be all sorts of technical issues. So um, if the internet doesn't work at all, then of course your auction would have to be cancelled, for example. When you refer to the secondary market price, is it public? Do you publish some report or some data set? Yes, it's public, but I would refer to Christian, please. Yeah, Andre, thanks. Um, of course, we do publish the secondary market prices as well on our, our website. Um, the extent we publish is, of course, limited, but we have uh, offerings within our data source team where you can uh, subscribe to uh, a more complete and comprehensive data set. And that can be also historical data or live data up to your needs. We have a complete uh, bundle of products on this data side as well. Thank you. Next question. Are there any plans to extend national trading schemes to any other European countries similar to the German and EHS? That's the German fuel trading system. Um, uh, maybe Adrian, is this a question you would like to answer? Uh, not sure. I mean, national schemes are by definition national, so it depends to each of the member states whether they have similar schemes in their in their planning. Uh, but maybe what I can say is that in the Commission proposal for the ETS um, the ETS uh, directive. Uh, is also in, includes a new ETS system that would cover buildings, fuel for buildings and road transport, uh, so-called ETS2 sometimes, as it be a separate distinct system from the current one um, that would cover all the fuel used for, for these two sectors. Um, this is a proposal that's been hotly discussed now in the Council and Parliament, so it would start 26, 27, depending on the outcomes of the, the legislative process um, and be similar, I guess, in many ways to the German national system. Um, but uh, yeah, besides that, I'm not sure what else I could say. Thank you. Next question, and I think that's uh, for Dario. Which sets the costs, cost fee for transactions between intermediaries? probably meant between clients and intermediaries. For Dario, please. Hello, yeah. Um, I think I'm audible, but not visible at the moment. Yes, hello. Hi. OK, uh, so thanks for the question. Um, here at ACT, as an intermediary, we try to provide a lot of flexibility. So the fees actually depend on various different things. Number one is which model you engage with, whether you use our intermediary access model or whether you want ACT to act as a counterparty. Second thing is obviously such things as clip size, you know, like how much are you going to order? How often do you want to order with us? Um, and what are the payment terms that you need? How much credit risk do we have to take? All these things are uh, involved in the, in, the, in the free structure and um, we're happy to discuss it on a case by case basis. Thank you. What is the role of ECC? ECC is the European Commodity Clearing and it's, it's the clearinghouse of uh, European Energy Exchange and they guarantee payment and delivery. Do I understand correctly? that if you bid higher than the lowest winning bid, you will only pay the lowest winning bid and not your own higher price. That's absolutely correct. It's a uniform bid price or it's, it's a uniform auction price. So if you pay 10 euro or whatever above the auction clearing price, you will only pay the auction clearing price. Could you elaborate on the discussions going on on cutting non-compliance buyers out of the market and the chances of this happening. Adrian, is this something you can take, please? Well, I can briefly say that uh, no, probably I cannot speculate further on this. Uh, this discussion is ongoing now in the co-decision, so 
we'll wait for the outcome of it and then take a position on it. Thank you very much. It looks that we have reached the end of the questions and this is a uh, sharp um, one past 12. So uh, thank you very much for, for this webinar. Thank you very much for all the listeners. Thank you very much for all the presenters. And I hope that uh, this webinar was useful to you. And let us know if you have any questions. Um, you can reach us via um, via our website or via the contact details um, mentioned in the presentation. Thank you very much and have a good week. Bye.